in 2024, Arsenal have 15 wins in 17 games. They've played 17 league games and they have won 15 of them. That is elite. That is comparable to anything that anyone has done in the Premier League era. That really is sensational. And something that even amplifies that already impressive record is the fact that of the two games that didn't end in victory, one of them was a draw at the Etihad. So in one of those games where Arsenal didn't get the victory, they actually got what they wanted to get out of the game. You know, Arsenal went into that game. They desperately wanted a point. They wanted to take four points cumulatively over Manchester City. And they managed to get what they wanted out of that game. So the reason that Arsenal are not top of the league because their run this calendar year has been devastating is because of that one fixture against Unai Emery's Aston Villa. But doesn't it show you the fine margins and how difficult it is to win the league? And what we can glean from this is that anyone who ever comes with the whole Arsenal have choked, Arsenal have bottled it, Arsenal are vulnerable. They have a weak underbelly. If you suggest that, I'm afraid that you are completely and utterly mistaken. It's a shame. I wish you were correct. But this Arsenal side have proven to us time and time again that they are not vulnerable. They are not chokers. That record is truly sensational. And I think we could say that maybe last season they did bottle it. You could suggest that they choked. There were various moments last season, the game against West Ham, the game against Liverpool. There was a moment last season when I genuinely believed that Arsenal were going to win the league and that's because they went away to Anfield in a title running and shooting towards the cop, they found themselves 2-0 up. That is a statement victory and obviously they didn't win that game. You had the Saka penalty. Then we all know what happened against Southampton. So if you want to say that Arsenal bottled it last year, I won't take issue with that. But this year, they are definitely not chokers. They have proven time and time again that that weak underbelly that has plagued them for a little while has gone. This season, they've been nothing but resilient. Whenever it goes wrong for them, they bounce back. Whenever a question is asked of them, they have a resounding answer. And that is the very definition of being a champion. And that is why Arsenal will be champions. This squad of players will be champions. Whether it's this season is up for debate. Whether they actually manage to find the chink in the armour of Manchester City this season, I don't know. Time is running out. Road is running out. The season is coming to an end when Arsenal don't need it to. They need more games. But this squad of players will be champions. You look at the development. You look at what they have been doing. You look at the improvement. You look at the age. And you can see that this squad is still learning, still developing. And they have now won as many games as the Invincibles. That's historic. Think about how Arsenal fans talk about the Invincibles. Think about the, the esteem in which that Invincible side are held, not only by Arsenal fans, but in world football, in the pantheon of great clubs. That achievement is seen by some as being one of the very best. Not necessarily by me, but it is seen as being one of the very best. This Arsenal team, this young developing Arsenal team with Mikel Arteta in charge, has won as many games in a, calendar, in a season as that Arsenal team. And let's face it, Arsenal still have two games to play. I believe that Arsenal will win two more games this season. So they will totally blitz the winning streak of the Invincibles out of the water. They will break it by two. And if they do that, they will end this season with one less point than those Invincibles. That is just unreal. And think about how young this team are. Think about the development. You know, Arsenal's game's still to come. They're looking at Manchester United and Everton. I believe that they will win those games. That will take them to 89 points. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. And think about the think about the team that they will be this time next year. Think about the player that Declan Rice is going to be with this experience in the bag. You know, he's spoken about not being there last year, but he can feel that there is something building, something more impressive. And if you look at how they were performing this time last year and compare it to now, you can just see the development. Look at the ease with which they won today and compare it to how they got on against Bournemouth last year. OK, fine. They did beat Bournemouth last year, but they were relying on what? A 97th minute Reese Nelson winner in order to get the three points that day. Today, the points were in the bag by half time. OK, look, the score was only 1-0 at half time, but Arsenal was so dominant in that first half. It could quite easily have been 5-0 in the first half. And there was never a doubt in my mind watching that game that Arsenal we're going to win the game. There was no doubt about it whatsoever. And you look at the way that they're stroking the ball around. You look at the variety of goal scorers. You look at the miserly, uh, miserliness of that back line. They don't concede goals. They score goals for fun. They spread the goals around. They have goals all over the team. 
you know, Leandro Trossard, every time I see him play, he seems to score. I think he's a wonderful little footballer, a brilliant player. And he's everything that I want Mikhailo Mudrik to be. He really is. Remember, we got Mudrik. They got lumbered with Trossard. And Trossard is the man. Absolutely brilliant. Kaya Saka, obviously, yet again on the score sheet. And when you look across this Arsenal team, literally none of these players are in their prime. Like, what kind of player is Martin Odegaard going to be in another two years? Where's Saka going to be in another two years? Where's Saliba going to be in another two years? Where's Declan Rice, who was a gladiator today? That wasn't the Emirates Stadium. That was an amphitheatre. And Declan Rice was sensational. Absolutely brilliant. Got a well-deserved goal. And that's what? Seven goals this season, ten assists. And that's not even his job. He's not even meant to be doing that. He is now your archetypal box-to-box midfielder without a flaw in his game. He really is sensational. Seven goals, ten assists. It's unreal. It really, genuinely is unreal. And when you look at the title running now, there is a genuine chance that Arsenal could do it. They're going to rely on some help. And when you look at the Manchester City fixtures, it's not going to be easy. But there is that game at White Hart Lane. And don't you think that it would just be the very definition of Spursyism? You know, the ideology that is Spursyism. The fact that Arsenal have won the league more times in White Hart Lane than Tottenham. Arsenal won the league more times at Tottenham than Tottenham. Part of that ideology is Spursyism. And I think it would be so in keeping with the traditions of Spursyism for Tottenham to take points off Man City. There is no doubt in my mind that Arsenal will win every game between now and the end of the season. They have just been unreal. And in Declan Rice, they have one of, if not the best player in the league. Phil Foden would have probably got my vote. I adore Cole Palmer. But the way that Declan Rice has revolutionised this Arsenal team, it's, it's immense. Because Bournemouth were a good side. You know, Arsenal made them look fairly ordinary, but Bournemouth are a good side. And I think from Bournemouth's perspective, you know, they hate early kickoffs, don't they? They hate your early, early kickoffs as much as Jurgen Klopp. And they didn't start playing until about 1.15. The game kicked off at 12.45. Like, it was ridiculous from them. They were terrible in the first half, but could have been slightly different. Look, Arsenal were worthy winners, but I think if you're a Bournemouth fan, you'll probably have a few gripes. I think you've got a few issues with VAR. I mean, Kai Havertz undoubtedly bought the penalty as well. I don't think you can blame him for doing so, but he undoubtedly bought the penalty. He waited for contact. He waited for the contact to come in. And when it did, he went down and the penalty was awarded. Probably correct, but he certainly bought that penalty. And I also think that the goal that was disallowed, and it could have been a very different game. You know, if Bournemouth's goal that should have stood had stood 2-1, it could have been slightly different. Dom Solanke was given a foul for nothing I mean it was the worst decision that I think I've seen for ages like a terrible terrible embarrassing decision but equally Arsenal will have some some complaints you know Christie could easily have been sent off with the score nil nil and if Bournemouth had gone down to 10 men after 10 minutes who knows what the score would have been so I do my best not to talk about VAR and referees because I find it so dull and so boring I like to focus on the football um Mikel Arteta has said that he's going to be watching the Man City game against Wolverhampton Wanderers later today, wearing a Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt. I will be watching that game myself. I, however, will be wearing a Manchester City shirt. Fingers crossed Manchester City can get the victory um, because I have a terrible sneaking suspicion that Arsenal are actually going to find a way and win the league. We have kept Arsenal away from the Premier League title for two decades. We have to keep them away for it for another year. We just simply have to. Um, but they have been amazing. They have been absolutely amazing. The way that they have played this season. Sensational stuff from Arsenal. The Emirates must have been bouncing today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please do me a favour. Please click subscribe. It would be an honour to welcome you to this community. And I'm inching ever closer to 300,000 subscribers. It would be my joy to welcome you into this community. Please click subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And I look forward to seeing you all a bit later. Cheers.